اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وی ور ڈسکسنگ چیپٹر نمبر ایٹی پیرا تھرڈ ہارمون کیلسیٹونین کیلشیم اینڈ فاسفیٹ میٹابلزم وائٹامن ڈی بون اینڈ ٹیتھ دا ٹاپک دیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ٹوڈے از وائٹامن ڈی ریلیٹڈ ایب نارملٹیز ان دا پریویس لیکچر وی ڈسکس اباؤٹ the chemistry of vitamin D and the various steps which are involved in the activation and synthesis of vitamin D and its mechanism of action and we uh, discuss about the different functions and how these effects of vitamin D are mediated and we discuss about the target organs today we are going to discuss about the various abnormalities that are related to vitamin D and the learning objectives for this lecture are that at the end of this lecture the students should be able to be able to enlist various vitamin D related abnormalities the students should be able to enlist the causes and the symptoms of these vitamin D related abnormalities and you will be able to discuss the treatment options for these problems the vitamin d deficiency in children the vitamin d deficiency is termed as rickets while in adults the vitamin d deficiency is called osteomalacia first of all we'll discuss about the various causes that can lead to vitamin d deficiency one is the inadequate supply or inadequate uh, Uh, inadequacy either in the diet or inadequacy uh, inadequate exposure to the sunlight which can lead to inadequate supply of vitamin D and impaired absorption can be a cause if there is a problem related to the intestine and there's an absorption uh, of the fat fats is a problem then vitamin D deficiency can occur or if there is impaired production of 25 hydroxy vitamin D this is liver related problem or if there is impaired production of 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol uh, that is a problem with the kidney or if the vitamin uh, d3 is being produced but there is resistance at the receptor level it all of these can lead to vitamin d deficiency first of all we will discuss about the rickets that is vitamin d deficiency in the children the various features are delayed milestones there is delayed closure of the anterior fontanelle delay in dentition deformities of the bone decreased serum calcium level and the bony deformities that can result in children are the craniotapes that, uh, that is enlargement of the skull the frontal bossing uh, rickettsic rosary pigeon chest locked knees and the bowed legs here you can see a child with a prominence of the frontal bone this is termed as frontal bossing and here the legs they are white at the end and they are of odd shaped and they are bent like a bow so this is this is termed as bow legs you can see here a child with various features of white uh, vitamin d deficiency a large forehead stunted growth and they can be odd shaped ribs and breast bones wide joints at elbows and wrist and large abdomen here you can see this is characteristic feature of rickets board legs over here in a child and this is uh, show this diagram is showing the beaded this picture is showing the beaded uh, appearance of the ribs you can see here here you can see a pigeon shaped chest termed as a typical term given to this is rickettsic rosary rickets occur in the children 
as you know now and it results from either calcium or phosphate deficiency in the extracellular fluid and this is caused by the lack of vitamin D and if this child is adequately exposed to sunlight the 7 D hydrocholesterol in the skin will become activated by the ultraviolet rays and it will form vitamin D3 which prevents rickets by promoting the calcium and phosphate absorption from the intestines. The rickets, uh, the peculiar time at which the repeat, uh, ricket tends to occur is the spring months because vitamin D formed during the preceding summer is stored in the liver and is available for use during the early winter months. So by the time the spring approaches, the stores uh, the stores uh, have uh, been used up and now uh, 25 hydroxycholecalciferol is not available does not become available to the kidneys to be activated anymore calcium and phosphate absorption from the bones can prevent the clinical signs of rickets for few first few months of vitamin D deficiency so the period the first uh, the period of first few months uh, is like uh, a latent period during which the clinical signs and symptoms do not appear because uh, because the bones as they are reserves of calcium and phosphate they try to prevent the fall in the calcium level uh, but ultimately the vitamin D deficiency signs do appear after a, a few months the plasma calcium concentration in rickets is only slightly depressed but the level of phosphate is greatly depressed the reason is that uh, the parathyroid glands they prevent the calcium level from falling by promoting the bone absorption every time the calcium level begins to fall but for the phosphate this the regulatory system is not good and the increased parathyroid activity will actually increase the excretion of phosphates in the urine. The rickets and how do they lead to the weakening of the bones? During the prolonged rickets, there is marked compensatory increase in the parathyroid secretion and this will cause extreme osteoclastic absorption of the bone and the bones they become progressively weaker and imposes marked physical stress on the bone but it also results in the rapid osteoblastic activity as well and the osteoblasts they start laying down the matrix which is called the osteoid which has not become calcified and it does not become calcified because of the insufficient calcium and phosphate ions so the newly formed bone the newly formed ossified is uncalcified remain uncalcified and is weak and it does not gain strength because of the lack of deposition of calcium and phosphate in it. So these features they develop like kyphosis that is uh, curved back, humping of the back and frontal bossing, craniotapes. When the uh, initially the bone calcium which is stored and because of the action of the parathyroid hormone there is resorption of bone and it tries to maintain the blood calcium level but ultimately a time will come when the bones they become exhausted of the calcium and at that point the level of the calcium will fall rapidly that is below 7 milligram per deciliter and the usual signs of tetany will develop and the child may die of tetanic uh, respiratory spasms the treatment of tetany is to administer an uh, intravenous injection of calcium and for rickets along with the vitamin large amount of vitamin D the calcium and phosphate has to be supplemented in the diet if vitamin D is not supplemented if it is not given in uh, then a little calcium and phosphate will be absorbed from the gut Now we move on to adult rickets. Adult rickets is also called osteomalacia. 
the adults usually they do not have serious dietary deficiencies of vitamin D or calcium because large quantities of calcium they are not needed for the bone growth as in the children but serious deficiencies of vitamin D and calcium can occur in case of statoria this is a, uh, this is the result this is a malabsorption actually when the gut is not able to absorb the fats so the fats are washed down the gut and when the vitamin D which is a fat soluble vitamin its absorption will also be affected and vitamin D will bind with the calcium and will form insoluble soaps with the fat and both of them will pass into the feces so there is loss of vitamin D from the body loss of calcium uh, in case of malabsorption syndromes poor calcium and phosphate results in adult rickett but it never reaches to the stage of tetany in which the blood calcium level falls severely below 7 mg per deciliter but they it can lead to bone disabilities the cause of osteomalacia is again inadequate exposure to sunlight especially the people living in slum areas and especially in the Muslim world, the females observe the whale, the parda, and they do not, uh, and they're living in the slum areas, they're not adequately exposed to the sunlight, uh, so they do suffer from vitamin D deficiency and they do show the signs of osteomalacia. Or the other cause is inadequate dietary intake. Uh, a normal average person do have an adequate intake of but in uh, poor socioeconomic conditions, poor socioeconomic uh, uh, income group, uh, because of the lack of the income and due to the reasons, monetary, social reasons, economic reasons, they, uh, when the adults, they are not adequately taking a good intake, uh, min demineralization occurs mainly in the spine, the pelvis and the lower extremities are affected. And this softens the bones and the bones become more susceptible to fracture it also can lead to bowing of the long bones here you can see this is normal bone anatomy this is the normal uh, this is a, di a picture is showing the normal anatomy and here you can see the bowing of the legs and in rickets and these uh, bones they are more prone to the fractures and even in the osteomalacia, the adults, you can see here the humping of the bone, the curvature of the uh, spine has increased over here. This is termed as kyphosis. And this is a middle-aged man with osteomalacia, nutritional vitamin D deficiency, and it has led to the malformation of the skeleton. Now we'll discuss about a term called renal rickets. As you know from your knowledge of previous lecture, from your knowledge of vitamin D, that kidneys uh, is the site where the activation of vitamin D takes place. 25 hydroxycholic calciferol is converted by hydroxylation reactions by the action of the enzyme 1 hydroxylase into 1 2 5 dihydroxycholic calciferol, which is the active form. So, if the patient has some disease related to the kidneys, like uh, or, or the kidneys are destroyed or they have been removed or in a person who has uh, renal failure and uh, the kidneys are not working and they are being treated by hemodialysis the problem of renal rickets can be a severe one and congenital hypophosphatemia can result because there is congenitally reduced reabsorption of phosphate by the renal tubules and the phosphate compounds uh, have to be given instead of calcium and uh, vitamin D and sometimes uh, the rickets is vitamin D resistant because the problem is at the receptor level the receptors they are not responding or they are not uh, acting appropriately in response to the vitamin D next we move on to vitamin D toxicity one of the cause of vitamin D is over ingestion uh, of vitamin D and the features are hypercalcemia 
and it can lead to metastatic calcification metastatic calcification means calcification occurring in normal tissues of the body you know that vitamin D is stored in the liver and it is toxic in high doses uh, toxic effects can lead to hypercalcemia demineralization of the bone increased calcium absorption from the intestine and it is associated with deposition of calcium in the soft tissues of the body like kidney and artery because of hypercalcemia where the calcium levels are in excess they may deposit here and there in the tissues and it can lead to the stone formation especially in the kidney and the symptoms of hypercalcemia are loss of appetite nausea increased thirst and loss of weight i hope this all is clear to you the different facts regarding the vitamin d deficiency in children the rickets the vitamin d deficiency in adults called the uh, osteomalacia and the vitamin d toxicity that is all for now thank you and allah hafiz